we're getting more comfortable showing the pain that we live with every day. Even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. I said we ain't do shit. Y'all can't fucking arrest us. Oh, yeah. For some reason, every time I see a, a, a story or, or, or an incident about law enforcement gunning down somebody who doesn't have a gun, for some reason they always look like me. I, I made a film. I made a film that was based off a off of seeing seeing video footage of, of somebody like who looked like me being murdered from where I was from. When the Oscar Grant thing happened, I saw the video too. This is before I was on with music and I, I'll never forget that image. So when I saw you, when I heard about your film and I seen it, I just wanna let you know, bro. And every time I see it, I break down crying like I can't, I can't. Let the man know if we are peaceful people. We are loving people. We love everybody who loves us. But we don't love anybody who doesn't love us. Stories. And I'm in New York at the time, and you know, Eric Gardner's situation had happened. Like all these things always happen. We become so numb to it. So it's to a place where it was like, I almost didn't even want to hear about it because it, it was like too real to handle. Because he was just sitting here. I just I came in. Sitting here. Mind my business. The fake guy stopped yes. him and so you can put it up on me. That's all right. I, I allowed myself to finally watch the Eric Gardner video. I was disappointed. Um, it's still like, why? You know, you you seen him die on national TV just like everybody else. Why? black and young getting killed and it's almost like you just we so used to it that it's just like we give it we give it like man I ask you know we give it that that's messed up that's crazy they out here wilding but do we really dive in I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created in I was taught that uh, justice is, you know, a right that every American should have. Number one reason for me wearing the t-shirt was the thought of what happened to Tamir Rice happened into my little Austin scares the living hell out of me. Because I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. This guy looks like he's up to no good, or he's on drugs or something. Black or Hispanic? He looks black. Did you see what he was wearing? Yeah. A dark hoodie, like a gray hoodie, and either jeans or sweatpants and white tennis shoes. My main message is, is uh, to the parents of uh, Trayvon Martin. Um, you know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. You know, we put a shield up, it's tough to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's tough to deal with the lies, man. You talk about ta Coast Coates and just reading, reading his work, when he putting out his feelings, I realized that, that, that the phrase that, that's been used to describe what, 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 what our people go through on the streets every day, whether it's in Fayetteville or whether it's where I'm from, you know, this idea of black on black crime, right? I, re I realized from, from ta Coast Coates that it's a lie. Here, especially those of you who work on true stories. Um, this film was about a real guy, Oscar Grant. Uh, he was born on February 27th, 
1986, so his birthday was actually a few, a few days ago. He would have been, been 28 a couple days ago. And his, his, his girlfriend and his daughter were supposed to come down to the Spirit Awards, but because it was a five-year anniversary of his death, uh, they, they couldn't do it because they were doing a memorial today. And I talked to her on the phone, and they were making chicken tacos because that was his favorite thing to eat. And uh, they were going to, 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 the, to the church where he was baptized, and everybody was getting together and having a good time. So that's what they're doing right now. Uh, so I wanted to give him a special shout out. And I talked to her, and I, and I asked her if she wanted me to say anything. And she said, just tell them about the people besides me who are going through the same thing. Because so many people, there's thousands of Oscar grants every year, people losing their lives to gun violence. She said, share a story about somebody that's like, that's like me. So I know a lot of you guys heard about you know, Trayvon Martin, and you guys, some of you guys might be heard about Jordan Davis. Um, and, and, and whenever we would travel with this film, we would go to different cities, and I'll meet people that say, hey, it was an Oscar Grant here in this neighborhood. It was an Oscar Grant here in this neighborhood. And they would say, are you going to make a movie about this person? Are you going to make a movie about that person? And I have to tell them that I'm that making this film, you know, it killed me. You know, waking up every day and going into the editing room or going to the set or going to do my research and seeing a guy that looked just like me, who was the same age as me and from where I was from, getting gunned down. But, but one story really touched me that happened over the past year. Um, and, that's, and that's the story, that's the story of Jonathan Farrell. Any of you guys ever heard about Jonathan Farrell? Well, Jonathan Farrell was a 24-year-old, 24-year-old guy who was, who was from Florida, but he was in North Carolina. He gave his friend a ride home uh, late at night, was coming back, coming back to his house for giving his friend a ride at 2.30 in the morning, and fell asleep at the wheel, and his car crashed and went off the road. The, the wreck was so bad that he had to kick his way out of the car by kicking out the back window. He was a former football player, so he was a pretty strong dude. <clears throat> and, I'm, and I'm sure his phone was either destroyed or, 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 or it was dead, because the first thing he did was climb up that hill and go to the first house that he could find to get some help. He was bleeding, obviously, you know, knocked on the door ferociously. And the woman that came to the door answered the door thinking it was her husband and saw this, saw this guy, this big, this big guy who'd just been in a car accident and freaked out, slammed the door in his face and got on the phone and called 911. Jonathan was outside asking for help, you know, ho hoping that she would call the ambulance or something like that. But she called the police because she was scared. She didn't know Jonathan and she said, told the police that I have a kid in here, I don't want him to get my baby, you know what I mean, please send somebody over. The police arrived and Jonathan ran to them with his hands up, because he figured that they were there to help him. And before they said anything to him, one officer tased him, and another officer shot him 10 times in the chest. And Jonathan Farrell died. This was in October of this past year. And, and, and I can't help but to think, whenever I hear stories like this, I can't help but to think that if Jonathan Farrell looked like Matthew McConaughey, he wouldn't have been shot. He would, have, he would, still, be, he would still be alive today. For some reason, every time I see a, a story or, or, or an incident about law enforcement gunning down somebody who doesn't have a gun, for some reason, they always look like me, or they, or they look like Michael, or they look like Gerard, or they look like Ephraim, or they look like Keith Stanfield. And I'm trying to figure out why. And I'm so thankful, so thankful to God that I had the ability to, to work in a, in a medium where I can ask those questions. I can work in a medium where, where, I can, where I can share these stories. And I'm so thankful to the American independent film system so thankful to the critics that see the film and, and put the word out, and so thankful to the process and to all you filmmakers that motivate me to help, to, help us to continue to tell our stories because there's so many stories that need to be told. Thank you guys so much. We need, by the way, I feel like, now nah, I just feel like this is, I feel like this is healthy, like, <laughs> bro, this is two, this is, this is two young black men having intelligent dialogue about what's actually happening right now in the middle, like, affected by it and, and how we can like work every day to like clean ourselves. Grew up watching ourselves be gangster rappers. We grew up watching ourselves being a lot of things of uh, video girls. We, we grew up with this. So it's like a level of like, I feel like self-reflection and honesty that we got to have. And instead of like marching on Washington, which we've been doing for a long time, it's like we got to really march on the hood.